dominates the island. It was both a fortress and residence for the island's population in time of attack. Today, the dominant feature of Gozo, the citadel, continues to reveal impassively much of the island's architectural diversity and unique charm. After the citadel, Victoria has its own particular attractions. The centerpiece of the visitor is always at first the marketplace, which remains surprisingly untouched by the more modern shops nearby. But just behind the marketplace, the old town can be found, through mazy alleys and behind ornate, sometimes secret doors. At the height of the summer, this, the odd walker apart, remains a quiet zone. A statue to the Virgin here. An ornate balcony there, but not many local inhabitants to be seen. The Basilica of St. George reveals in its extraordinary opulence that behind those often closed doors are people whose lives have been much influenced by their religion and its place in Gozo. St. George's is one of the island's many churches and it's also one of the most spectacular. After Victoria, the visitor usually heads for the sea to see something of the island's famous coastline. The route is through typical Gozo, dusty bumpy roads passing through small villages or past former architectural splendours. Through the village of San Lorenz with its distinctive church. the odd farmer might be working in the fields. Then it's down to Duera for Fungus Rock and the Inland Sea and the Asia Window, where natural beauty says it all. At lunchtime, the choice of where to eat is great. Seaside cafes abound, but for the lover of the longer lunch, the hotels are numerous. <laughs> 